This is Dev Pack 3, the new standard, and it's from Highsoft High Quality Software. High quality software for all Amiga computers. I imagine that a lot of people wouldn't have seen this. I never owned this actually back in the day. I got a free version of Dev Pack 2 from Amiga Format, I think. But this was software for assembling Amiga programs. So this is the kind of software to use, and this is actually high quality software. And believe it or not, these people, Highsoft, are actually still in business. They've still got a valid website. They don't do Amiga software anymore, or this kind of software, but they do, uh, you know, they do have a great history for it, and they do website development now. But the Dev Pack 3 and the other programs that they've done, they are mentioned on their website. So they are still going, this is Highsoft Dev Pack 3. Right, so inside, this bubble wrap isn't a thing, you get uh, you get this 68,000 pocket programming guide. So this is actually really quite good. A handy quick reference for programmers for all the 68,000 and 68010 instructions, official Motorola, all the opcodes. And inside here is basically the kind of stuff that you'd find online nowadays, which is like every single instruction that the 68,000 can do, how it works. Yeah, load effective address, we'll be using that a lot. and everything in there in one little handy little guide. So that would have been really useful back in the day. Like nowadays you just go online and you type 68,000 if you wanted to know something about it and you'd be able to find something very much like this. But back in the day, this would have been very, very useful. So that's the first thing you get. What else have we got? So we've got, <laughs> we've got a disc wallet. Look at this, look after your discs inside here. Yeah, we've actually got the four discs. Well, it comes with four discs, but what it actually is, is there's two versions of the program and two versions of the actual files that you need to build programs for the Amiga. So we've got a Workbench 2 version with the Workbench 2 includes for the programming and a 1.3 version as well. So if you're, if you're running on 1.3 and you were trying to build for 1.3, you might use this and you're running on Workbench 2 and you want to build for 2, you might use this. I'm not sure that if you're running on Workbench 2 and you wanted to build Workbench 1.3, you might use these two discs or something like that. Not exactly sure. And uh, weird, down there, it's got the little serial number, and that isn't a copy protection thing. That's actually the serial number if you want to get support from the company. And as this company is actually still in business, um, I wonder, <laughs> I'm not sure if you could still find them up and say, hey, I've got Dev Pack 3, is it, is it still work? But yeah, look at this. Do not expose your disc to bright light. Never like strong magnetic fields. And so this is really nice. They give you this little pack to protect your disc because this wouldn't have been cheap software back in the day. Don't leave your computer in the drive. Eject it first. That's always a good idea because the clasp is, when, when the disc is in the drive, the clasp is unfolded, so you're exposing the surface. So you should always eject your discs when leaving them in the drive. So it's all good advice. Keep your disc labels up to date. Make regular backups. Keep them away from kids and coffee. Yeah, kids and coffee, the worst things in the world. Right, and then last, oh, well, we've got a registration card. Let's just have a quick look at that. So whoever bought this didn't register it. Um, there you go. I, th I'm not, I don't think they're still there, but the company does still exist. So yeah, you can, <laughs> you can register it for support, which would you use that serial number for. So if we look at this, the, the, the best thing about this really and this is the very good thing, is this ring-bound manual, which is actually really good. It's got this little leaf thing here, which is for, um, you know, keeping your page marked or whatever, I think. Uh, so this is from 1991, and this is a full manual on how to use this pro uh, this program. And this is, this is great. It's got how to use the manual as the first thing. And I've had a quick look through this before. How, you know, how to, how to assemble, how to debug, how to link and various other extra stuff. So here we go, Highsoft Dev Pack 3, called Highsoft Dev Pack, is a complete language pack for the production of fast, efficient assembly language programs on your Amiga computer. So I think a lot of programs back in the day probably would have been written with this. I don't know how many, but um, I know for a fact um, some of the things in Amiga format, like Dave Jones um, said that he wrote Menace with it, um, and I think if you look at CJ's Elephant Antics, it actually mentions Dev Pack 2 on the title screen as the software they used. So I know for a fact they used it on that. But I'm sure a lot of people will use this back in the day to build programs. So there is an editor for the creation of editing your assembler source code, a linker for building your programs together and other object files, a debugger for helping you stamp out those nasty bugs and problems, and of course, an assembler to turn your source code into speedy, compact machine code. So this is really great. Please spend some time and effort getting to know and learning how to use the manual so you can gain maximum benefit from Highsoft Dev Pack. There's actually, I think there's actually kind of a quick intro here. 
So that's like even straight in off the bat on page three, they've given you like, you just want to get going, which is what everybody wants to do. Then here's how you do it. So the quick tutorial. So this is actually really good. I think we'll actually go through this because this tutorial is probably one of the better ones I've seen in, in, in like a program that you get. Like you don't really get manuals like this nowadays that's telling you everything to do. But this one goes through a little tutorial of the example program that's on there and uh, kind of gets you used to what's going on in the program. So let's. I'm going to boot the program up now in, I'm actually going to use an emulator and we'll actually have a go through this quick tutorial and we'll see if we can actually assemble a program and have a look at it and, and see how it works. Because I, I went through this and I thought this is, this is a really good introduction to a piece of software. This is really actually quite cool. So I've just booted up WinUIE and I've got two of the disks here um, just basically inserted into the virtual drives. These aren't the exact disks you would have got with this, but these are pretty much identical. So I'm just going to open up DevPack and I'm going to open up the main program and we're going to follow through the tutorial in the manual. So if I just launch DevPack there and it basically just opens up with nothing. Yeah, I think this might be a later version than the one I've actually got on these disks. This is 1993. Mine says 1991 on the box. So I might have a slightly later version here. By the way, we're going to go through this quick tutorial. It says this is a deliberately quick and dirty tutorial to see how straightforward it is to edit, assemble and debug programs with DevPack Amiga. So uh, in this tutorial, we're going to assemble and run a simple program which contains two errors and debug it. So uh, it tells you to back up your disks. Um, after a short delay, it will show the empty window. That's what we've got here. It says untitled. To load a file, you should press the right mouse button and move the mouse pointer over the project menu. Well, it's telling us how to use the Amiga here, basically. But what we want to do is load, and we're going to go to the examples folder that came with it, and we are going to load demo.s. So we're going to load that in, and here we go. It's a very short program. That is the entire program there. Uh, and basically, this is designed to just get you kind of going with the, the assembler. When you've loaded the window, it will show the top lines of the file. If you want to have a quick look at the rest of the page, you can press shift down to look at the next page. Does that work? I don't think. Oh yeah, it does. Shift, shift up and shift down. So we're already learning how to navigate and just up and down on the cursors. We'll actually move you up and down. We can have a quick look at this. It's just basically parameters that are telling it how to assemble. Um, there is some include files, they came off the include disk. So these are the files that we need to actually get something to work with the Amiga operating system. Uh, we've got a bit of code here that's opening the library, the DOS library. Uh, and we're making a call here, call DOS output. I don't know how, what that does. And then we're printing a message, which is defined by the string and string is down here. Uh, which is a program written with Highsoft's DevPack Amiga. And that 10 on the end, uh, I believe, is just a line break. So <clears throat> that's why that 10's on the end of that string there. Um, so that's pretty much it. And the rest of it's cleanup, which is cleaning up the program. So that's the short program that we're going to try and assemble. Uh, it actually says, with most shorter programs, it's best to have a trial assembly that doesn't produce a listing or binary to check the syntax of the program and show up typing errors. Move the mouse to the program and select check. Oh, check. Okay, let's do that. So it's basically doing assembly, but I think it's just assembling it to memory. So as you can see, it's actually, um, this doesn't actually assemble. Instruction not recognized in line 37 uh, to this move. And it's, it's actually pointing us to the exact character where it thinks it, something doesn't work, I think. So it was expecting something else there. And it actually says here, the assembler will report an error, instruction not recognized. Yeah, that's exactly it. Uh, pressing any key will return you to the editor. There we go. The cursor will be placed on the incorrect line. There it is, it's putting us right at the point where, where it wanted us to go. And the error message displayed in the window title bar. Well, that isn't happening here. We're just getting DevPack Amiga copyright high stuff. So that might be a problem with its 3.2 maybe, maybe something's changed there. That doesn't work. Um, so it's actually telling us how to correct it because, because this MOV, this stands for move a long word, uh, this DOS base into the address register one. Uh, this actually is the incorrect syntax. It's actually move, not mov. So uh, there you go. So after that, um, so it should be changed to move to do so and then select assemble. So it, it, if you think you're confident that it's going to work now, you can go to assemble and that's going to actually look at that source file and turn it into actual machine code executable. 
So that did that pretty fast, assembled into 138 bytes of a Mamiga executable relocatable code. It says, this is very much faster than assembling to disk. So that basically says it's assembling to memory, is it? Um, and allows you to try things out immediately, which is exactly what we want. The assembly worked this time. Yes, it did. Um, now it says, if you're using an Amiga 68000 processor as opposed to the 6820, 3040, don't run it yet. Well, we're actually emulating a 6820 here. So we're actually all right, but it says there's a deliberate error and you will probably see a software error task held message from the system and you'll have to reboot the machine. So it's basically telling you is they've put an error in this actual demo. They've actually put an error in and running on here is actually gonna do nothing, I'll show you. So we can run the program and it's a bit uneventful because nothing actually happens. But if you run this on the 68,000, they're saying that basically it will actually crash the system and bring it down. And we might crash the system in a minute, but who knows what's gonna happen. So it basically says the tool for finding bugs um, and checking your program is a debugger because this program is clearly not working. So select debug from the program menu. Let's have a look. Oop. Program debug. There we go. And that's brought up the debugger. Wow. So this is, if we look up at the top here, uh, we've got we've got all the registers that are inside the 68,000, the program counter, the data registers, stack register, and those A ones are the address registers, and that's the data that's in them right now. There's the disassembly. That's the that's the actual line with the little arrow there. That's the actual line that we're about to execute. There's the source code for that line. It's actually printed on it right there, but you might not have the source code depending on what you're actually disassembling. And here is just, um, you can just look at memory. So you can enter in any address. You can just go look at what's in that actual memory address. So this is quite a common thing that you'd find on debuggers nowadays anyway. And you can just see that this kind of thing existed, you know, back in the 90s, it was, it was a thing then too. For now, we just wanna run the program from the debugger and catch any problems and find out what caused them. So press Control R to run the program. Now, I think this might be where the tutorial actually differs from what's gonna happen. Uh, because if I do Control R, it says executing, and you'll see it executing, executing, and then it just quits. So there, something's wrong with the program, but just running through the program isn't gonna work. It does say here on the 68,000 computer, the message address error will appear at the bottom of the display with the disassembly window following at this instruction, start, move out, DOS name, A1. Now, that doesn't happen on ours. I think maybe because the 6820 is catching this instruction. But it's basically saying the instruction caused an error on the 68000 because the location DOS name is at an odd address which cannot be accessed with the move L instruction. This is not the case on the 6820s and upwards. And if your program is such a machine, you should be aware of this since you, many of your code works fine but crashes on the 6800. So it's basically saying that this line of code up here, this DOS name here, is incorrect because it should be moving in the address of this DOS name, not DOS name itself. So that's what's actually wrong there, basically. So they are suggesting a fix for that, which is to put a hash on the front of this, which will actually load the address. But I'm gonna, we'll look at this in the debugger now, and we'll actually have a look and see if we can see what it's doing. So I'm gonna go to debug, and we'll take a look. So we can actually look, um, at if we step over, now I know this for a fact, you can actually use tab to go around these windows, uh, but it's control Z is actually to step over this line. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna step over the move a uh, DOS name line. By the way, uh, you can see here that this is a case where the actual source is actually different from the disassembly because we actually put in a move, move L, which is move a long word, but the, the assembler has translated it into move a.l, which is move address. And I knew that because there's an address register there. So it actually just did an automatic translation for us and um, changed that instruction. But that's something the compiler you know, can do if it wants to. It can actually change the code. But you can see there that that's why the disassembly is not the same as the actual source code. But just be aware of that. But control Z will move us, step us over that line and we're gonna execute uh, moving this uh, DOS name address into A1. And we're gonna see what we get. So uh, you can see there that um, A1 is this number here, which just seems to be a little bit of nonsense by the looks of it. And we should be seeing something over here on the right, which kind of shows us what's supposed to be in that address. And it looks like there's nothing there. It doesn't seem to make much sense. So if we tab over to the memory window, we can press M and we can go look at what's at the address DOS name like that. And you can see here the actual address is this 29852D. And you can see it's actually 
what's actually at that address is, is just the word dos.library. And that's what we're actually trying to get. We're trying to get the address of this, the, this string into the A1 register. But unfortunately, what we're actually getting by the looks of it isn't the address itself, but we're actually getting the characters 646F. You can see them there, 646F73. We're actually loading in the word DOS name into that address register. Now, that's not what we want. We want the address of that string. So what we can do is just, I think, Control Q will quit this. I might, I might just let it run. I've got a suspicious feeling that this is going to crash. Let me just try. Oh, let's just see if it'll crash the computer. Hopefully it doesn't. It'll crash the virtual computer in our case. No, we're all right. So what we can actually do there is we can swap this out for a different instruction, which is probably one that would be recommended for doing this anyway, which is load effective address, L-E-A. So um, what that should do, oh, actually, how is that highlight? Are we going to highlight things like that? Yeah, there we go. So that's going to load the effective address DOS name into the A1 register. So let's just see if that still assembles, which it should do. There we go. Well, it's the same number of bytes, so exactly the same thing's happening. Now let's debug this again and see if we get any different information. So you can see that um, we're actually, oh, it looks like it's, oh, it thinks the source is different because I actually haven't saved the source yet. So that's a bit weird. The source in memory is actually different to the one, but we've definitely got the right thing there. We're doing load effective address DOS name into A1. So if we do control Z to step over that line, ah, uh, look at this. So now we're getting what we expected. The A1 register has been, been loaded with this 2A1C7D. Is that what's in, is that what the DOS name is? Yep, so that's the address there, 2A1C7D. And you can see there that what it's doing is it's actually showing us the memory here. It's showing us the memory of what that is, and then it's showing us like a, uh, an ASCII version of it next to it. So you can see that is what we expect. We're expecting that that is the address, the DOS library. And, um, and then the program's gonna carry on. So we didn't do what they said in the instructions here. They wanted us to change for move L um, with, a, with a hash there to tell us to load the address of it. But instead, <clears throat> we did it our own way. So that's pretty cool. And it's gonna go on and tell us how to put breakpoints in and all kinds of stuff. But I'll just let that run by doing Control R. And there we go. So we actually got our program actually run there. Our program went with Hisos Deadpack Amiga. There's actually a bit more to the tutorial here as well. It's going on about breakpoints and other things. It's talking about the Control Z that I went through there. But that is a really nice, like quick introduction to how to use this. So we can just see that if we actually run, we actually run now, we just get the output of the program. There you go, demo program, a program went with Hisos Deadpack Amiga. So that is actually pretty cool. But this manual just goes on now because this is almost like when you get the Bond film where you get the introduction at the start where it's like doing a previous job. This is kind of like the quick introduction. And then the real, the real fun really starts because it, it goes on about you know how to make a backup. It literally goes through how to use actual windows on the operating system as well. Like, you know, this is what the save window does. So a lot of this stuff at the start, you'd probably skip, but this is really made for people who, who maybe don't even know how to use the computer that well and they're gonna write a program. So how to edit the text. So you've basically got a built-in text editor, searching, printing a block, going to a line, that's quite important. How to delete files, how to make macros. Oh, an IBM keypad. We don't have that, it's an Amiga. And then once you get, to, you get to page 65 and then it's gonna start telling you about the assembler, you know, how it actually works, basically assembling into memory. So this, this would have been back in the day the way, the way you could have written programs. I don't think it'd be, I don't think I'd recommend it nowadays is the way to do it because there's probably better stuff we can do on the PC maybe. But if you were gonna actually assemble programs back in the day, a lot of the programs that you've used probably were assembled with this, with this program. So even talking about the 6820 there, floating point registers, output file formats, assembler directives like the include, debugging information, so this is actually a really in-depth manual and that's just going on about the assembler there. There's the debugger. So we just used a bit of the debugger before. That's what we just used. Um, so basically, yeah, just telling you how to use it. So this would have been an invaluable tool and a very quick tool at getting going with, with such a great manual as well back in the day for actually, you know, making your own Amiga programs. And like I said, I, I did use DevPack 2, which I got free like a free version from Amiga format back in the day. 
but um, I never actually owned back in the day an actual copy of this, but I was much better at um, Amiga machine language back in the day than, than I am now. I, I'm really like quite rusty on it. I can hardly remember any of it. And writing a full program is actually quite in depth. You've got to know all about the system. And there's a lot of stuff that I've forgotten. That's probably where you'd need, um, you'd need a book on like hardware programming or at least knowing how to program for the OS. But yeah, this is just a quick look at DevPack 3, um, which is software for the Amiga to help you make software. So hopefully in the future, I'll be doing more videos like this where I'm looking at actual Amiga software and maybe we do a bit of programming and stuff like that and see what we can make the Amiga do. But I, I think that's really cool to have a program like that that you can just boot up and within a few seconds, we actually compiled um, a program and we got it to run and we debugged it. So that's a really cool thing. Like stuff nowadays doesn't come with manuals. You just have to figure it out yourself. But back in the day, this is how they did it. And a lot of effort went into this. So I think that's really cool.